What's up, good people? It is your boy Lonnie Hunter back for another edition of the Lonnie Hunter Show here on Raymond Television Network. You know how we do it every week at this time. Today is about to be crazy. You hear me? I got two of my friends on the show and uh, we're just gonna have a conversation. It's a lot going on in the world. It's a lot going on in society. But uh, by the time the show ends, you are gonna know exactly how to navigate it all and still be good at what you do. On the show today is the pretty lady. My sister for real, Miss Lexi. How you doing, beautiful? Lonnie, what's going on, handsome? You all right? It's all good. I like when you say that and you flip your hair like that. That's a good look. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> all right, my brother from another mother. Yes, sir. Philly's finest, baby, for real. Yeah, Jermaine Dolly is on the show. What's up, Jay? What's up, El Boogie? You good? I'm good, man. Good, for real. Listen, y'all, this is, this is um, something crazy going on right here for a lot of people. Uh, and the reason why I say for a lot of people is because if you follow Lexi, if you follow Jermaine, you know that the craziness has not affected them to the point to where um, it has stopped either one of y'all, for real. Uh, and one of the things that I want to first you know, kind of kick off with is how similar the two of you are. Both of you have this situation in the car with how you listen to secular music that is second to none. And what's so crazy about it is, Lexi, you got your style, Jermaine, you got your style, but it all works, man. What gave you the idea to do that? Jermaine did it first and I saw him do it. And, and I said, and I tagged him the first time I did it. I was like, um, Jermaine, this, this, you know, this is for you, or something like that. I said, I tagged him. And, um, but I just, I did it in the form of, you know, these lyrics are too much. Jermaine just sings all the lyrics. He just sings. I, I wouldn't dare do it, because I'm really sad. <laughs> no, like, Lexi took us to another level. Like, Lexi went to a whole other level. So I started, because I was in the car asking one day, and I was really going off singing. I, I mean, I'm going off and I caught myself. I said, let me just videotape this one time. And then I, it started with one, then I'm like 55 now. So like, like it just kept going. People were always tuning in, but Lexi be going in. I love it. I love it. But the go in is so real to a lot of people because it's not like you all are going in and doing stuff that people don't do. Because Jermaine, I promise you, people are in their cars on a daily basis going in on these songs, can't sing, don't know what the notes are, but they in full on concerts. Doc. That's why your joint is so funny when I see you doing it because I can see other people doing it in a heartbeat. Right, right, right. Yeah, I, I, everybody tag me. So, like, I, it's like different dynamics of it too. Like, you know, you find people. They try to harmonize with the songs and you find people that just go in, like go run all all up and down the song and all that. And and some people might be off no, you be like, ew, why do they sound like that? You know, so yeah. just incorporate everything in there. And Lexi, she just takes it like she does her thing where, you know, like, oh that, that's not right, that's not right, something like that. So it it all like correlates with each other, like it be lit. So one day we definitely got to get in the car together and like that. I think that's what everybody That's what I'm getting at. That's what I'm getting at. <laughs> Everybody is waiting for me and her to get in a car together and just go. And I, I'm with it. I'm so with that. Like, so that's I cool. never thought of that. That is, that would be insane. I'll be looking at you like, oh my god. Because to be honest with you, I don't know any of the lyrics to any of these songs, and you know all the lyrics. I listen to it all day. So yeah, like I, I know them. So well, just promise me one thing. I want to be in the back seat. I just want to be in the back seat. I ain't got to even say nothing. <laughs> but Lexi, what, what works for you is you have a high pitch holler when you're ready to go in that makes it all work. <laughs> I want you to do for me one thing. Just say, get up, wash your tail, and go to church in that voice you use. That's it. That's it. Uh, what do I say? I, I, I don't know. It just comes to me. Get up. Watch your tail and get to church. That's it. Facial expression when you finish the phrase, there's everything about that right there. Right there. Yeah. And let me tell you why. 
because every morning, and I'm sure Jermaine can speak to this, those of us who are musicians and we work in the church and we're, and we're, we're on the praise team and, and we still give our gifts to God, um, I, I served for 21 years at my church and I, I'm, I'm a rare one because I didn't get paid. I, 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 just, I just served, but I would have to get up every Sunday and be there on time like I was getting a check. The musicians were getting a check. I wasn't getting a check. Yeah. And I served under uh, Pastor Reginald Morris Lane, who was like my father for 20, 21 years before he passed, rest in peace. And, and I figured I, one day, one, I guess one Sunday, I was really tired and I didn't feel like, and I just put the, like Jermaine said, you just put the phone on and just start recording. And I was like, look, if I gotta go to church, all y'all need to get up. Everybody get up, wash your teeth, get up. Cause I'm tired of it. And then it, I, it started off like this, cause I was mad, but then it morphed into, and you know, people, Jermaine, people stop me, Lonnie. And when I'm in New York or I'm in this place or that place, and they say, you know, I go to church because of you. Be and I, I never, come on, man. I'm not churchy like that. I would never think in a million years that God would use something as silly yeah. as that to yeah. actually get someone to go to church. He said, I haven't been to church in years, but because of you, I did that. I was like, that's big. That is big. And one of the things that's big for me is when you talk about being somewhere 21 years and uh, most people see the Lexi or they see the Jermaine, they see Lonnie and, and it's on stage. It's the, it's the performance piece of us. Uh, but one thing I like about the both of y'all, uh, Jermaine, on Sundays, if you go to your Instagram page, you are right there on the keyboard. It's not, we don't even see the people in the audience. It's not about, look how many people came to see me. It's about, this is what I do to give what God has given me to back to the people. That's one thing big that I appreciate about you, Doc, is your Sunday morning strategy, which is epic for people to see. Yeah, um, honestly, I started doing it because um, there's nobody in the church, it's just me, the, the musician is about four of us, the pastor and three singers. We be streaming, so it's actually a live stream. I just stream from my phone. Mm -hmm. And um, and like Lexi, well, I get paid at my church, but I still serve, like, so I don't get, say for instance, people hit me up all the time, like, yo, we want Jermaine to fly out and we want to pay him top dollar, I mean, like, uh, benefits to lead praise and worship at the church. Like, I'm from Philly, so they want me to Detroit. I don't got calls to go to Houston and a whole bunch of calls, right? But I turn them down because that church keep me humble. I know wow. me. I know me. I'm not, and here's the thing, I'm not even the, the minister of music there. I'm the keyboardist yeah. that yeah. occasionally sings. Yeah. yeah. Like, so I just got a mic there just to help out a tenor or to help out an alto. Like, I don't like lead worship there. Like, I don't lead worship there. Like, I stay, I have a boss. And what's funny is when he got there, I was there for about like 11 years. Um, and when he got there, he got there about like three years ago named John. You know John, uh, uh, Lonnie. Uh, yeah. So, so he, um, he got there or whatever. And, you know, I never had to go to rehearsals. Because, like, at that church, uh, Ezekiel Batters, God bless him, the choir needs more work than the musicians, right? right? So usually the MD or the minister of music mainly focuses on the choir. And we just come in, we just play our part, and that's, that's that. Yeah. John wanted musicians at the rehearsals. I'm kind of grandfathered in, so I'm like, I'm not going to rehearsals, but that's his, that's what his rule. Right. So me and him had a conflict. He was like, bro, if you can't come to rehearsals, you can't play. I said, who are you? You can't fire me. Like, who are you? You can't fire me. God checked me. I told him to his face, ask John, John, ask John, Lonnie. I said, you can't fire me. Who are you? You can't fire me. Like, God checked me when I got home that night. He said, well, who are you? He said, well, who are you? Like. You only got to where you at, not because you got songs on the radio or because you got a following. I can take all that away. And then you really need that. Then you then you really need to be at that church. You know what I'm saying? And and I had to go, I had to humble myself, I had to call John back and say, yo, I'm sorry. When do you need me? What day's rehearsals? I call wow. him and everything. Like, yo, like, I'm sorry. He's right. He's the he's the head uh, head dude in charge. Cool. And people don't even know, like, I, I serve at that church, but I, my mom church. At three thirty, I go to her church at three thirty. Uh, um, Pastor um, Mark Van Wright, um, he was giving us fifty dollars a week. I told him to keep the money. I let my man come in and play, and I just go just to hear a word. And wow. I serve whenever I need it. Like so, 
Serving is what really, really keeps me grinding, what keeps me uh, what doors open because I choose to stay under leadership and choose to serve. So I'm not there just to show you all that I'm playing. There's nobody in that church when I'm playing on, on the keyboard. I'm not the boss. I have a boss that tells me, like, yo, you wildin'. You're late. Stop being late. Like, like I, and I have to listen to that. So that, that keeps me humble because God know if I go to any one of these churches, they're only going to praise Dolly. In Philly, everybody cares about Jermaine. Like, on the road, everybody cares about Dolly. Like, oh, my God, Dolly, we love you. We love you. We love you. And that gets to your head. And if I'm getting that on Sunday, I'm going – I know me. I talk greasy to people. Like, I get, when I get a big head, I talk muddy to people. Like, who are you? Like, I said it to John. Like, who are you? And so right. that, that keeps me humble. Like, that keeps me – I got a ball. So, yeah. I tell you, Doc, because the whole testimony that you just gave is how I met Lexi. The whole testimony you just gave is how I met Lexi. Lexi, you called me one day to be a part of uh, Gospel Focus, Find Out Can You Sing. I knew about you uh, to the point to where I saw you as people would see Dolly, as he, as he just described. We weren't friends then, we weren't at this, at this place. But I saw you work that, and, and it was a thing where people had to come and, and uh, audition. So these were just people off the street that would come in and audition. And I watched you just be so welcoming and loving and hug me up and all of that kind of stuff. And what you don't see is when the people walk away from you, the, the effect of what that hug did for them. You know what I'm saying? So when, when we see Jermaine on the, on the keyboard on Sundays, or when we see you doing your thing and you, you're, you're loving on people, that is so much bigger than what that song just said that you sang. You feel me? And I appreciate both of y'all for just being who you are and not letting that thing go to your head because all three of us know the go to your head type people. We know them. <laughs> we know who they are. So listen, we're going to take a break. I'm going to come back because... Me and Lexi have been doing this thing, this get it done thing with fitness and all of this kind of stuff. And Lexi, we got a new member to the family, baby. Jermaine is on it. And we're going to talk about it coming up next. Stay close to your boy. It's Raymond Television Network. I wish I could, but I just don't know how. I don't have the time. I don't have enough technical knowledge to pull this off. I'm too young. No one will listen to me. So what's really holding you back? What if you could create the life you imagine no matter the circumstance or what others think? What if you could move the fear or use it? The choice is yours. Change your thinking. <laughs> You change your life. So if you're willing to take a risk on you to give up something so you can go up, follow me on social media with hundreds of like-minded people becoming the best that they can be. After all, we came to shape the future. Take care. We are back, ladies and gentlemen, on the Lonnie Hunter Show, and uh, I got my friends Lexi and Jermaine. We just chopping it up, kind of going over uh, what life is like during this COVID situation and this thing called industry. And uh, before we went to break, Jermaine, you were talking about uh, keeping yourself humble. And uh, during the break, what they didn't hear is you said something that had me and Lexi hollering. You said, <laughs> I like myself. <laughs> And I will get big headed quick. <laughs> now, I already like myself. So like you telling me you like me too? Oh, it's a wrap after that. You know what I mean? So me being unlike under my leadership of um uh Pastor Brian King at Ezekiel Baptist and I go to my mom's church, they get my tithing at um at New Harvest Kingdom Ministry. So um they care about Dolly and I and you know it, when, when I start feeling myself, right, God had humbled me. He was like, yo, you, I don't need you. He said, like, just look at the Tower of Babel, the, the, that whole story. At this whole point, at one point in time in life, everybody spoke one language. And so the, it, was a good, it, was, it was a good idea, but the intentions behind it were bad because they wanted glory for themselves, right? God said, Nizzy, that's not going to go down. He shut all that down, and it's, the Bible says that everybody – started to not understand who understand each other. And that's how they say different languages came about, right? So in the King James Bible, it spells right. Babel, B-E-L. -B -E 
in the message Bible, it spells it B-A-B-B-L-E, mm. meaning Babylon. And so God told me, like, when you go up there ministering, you wonder why people don't understand. You don't, you don't, you understand it. You, you're not, you, you're wondering why people don't understand you because you're up there babbling. You out there doing it for real. You're doing it. You're, you're, you're doing what you're doing is a good cause, but your intentions behind it because you want to get the glory because you want to change God for music because you want to be the man. Nobody understands you, and that's why you're just left behind. And so that's why me going back to church every Sunday lets me know like why I got here from serving, being a humble servant, and that's how you know. What I mean, I keep. Going where I'm going. That is a good word. Everybody has had a humbling experience to where we had to uh, pull ourselves back. And hopefully everybody watching us right now has somebody in your life that you can see or talk to that's not really into what you are or who people think you are or all of the lights and glam and all that kind of stuff and can say, look, that ain't right. You shouldn't do that. This, do you look crazy? You know, that kind of thing. We got to have that kind of person in our lives. Lexi, talk to me about something that you had to be humbled and had to pull yourself back. Oh, no, it's nothing that I had to, it's nothing that I necessarily had to do. My church and people around me, uh, a lot of people are just like me. And so I'm, I'm going to tell you, you're fat in that dress. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Your pants are too tight. I don't want to see all that. Absolutely. <laughs> I do it. I do it constantly so I get it back and the people around me are like me, but I did have a moment. Um, Jermaine, I, I I want your phone number. I don't know if I have it in my phone, but like you're now one of my favorite people. Seriously, like I'm not saying it because we're on here, but that just floored me because people don't talk like that and they're not they're not as honest. But I had one situation quickly that I was at the church and Jermaine, maybe you've you've uh, experienced this in Lonnie, maybe you have too. I was I was singing and and the spirit of the Lord. Every time there was a season where the spirit of the Lord would come in, every time I would sing. And it was, and then we would start a flow and people would be laid out and the Lord would use me. And it kept going week after week, month after month. So I was the go-to girl. They would hand me the mic. When you give it to me, the, 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 the dog, when I tell you the glory would come in, the Lord would give me a, 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 a flow that, that was off the song, but it wasn't the song. And people would be like screaming and running. And I remember coming in one Sunday and I started coming late. And, 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 and I heard this voice in my head that said, the, the singing was going on. And I said, man, if they don't give me the mic, you know, it's just going to be okay. You know, this, this Sunday, it's just going to be okay. That spirit kept talking to me. And every time they gave me the mic, one time they didn't give me the mic. Mm. And I was like, y'all didn't give me, what? I'm the MVP, like y'all niggas. But I couldn't, uh, I, couldn't, uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't say it out loud. Right. And so, and so finally, uh, that that spirit took over me. And watch this. Jermaine was right. People would come to me and people don't mean any harm. Mm -hmm. They would come to me after service and say, you know, so-and-so sang and she was good. But when you sing, oh. something happened. I mean, the chains break when you sing. I didn't get that one. Sonya. I mean, we love Sonya. But when it came to you, oh, girl, not one, not two, not three. So many people would say that and one day I came in and I said, I need to, I sat myself down because the spirit had got so big inside of me that I was looking at people when they were singing like, when that got, when that happened, I went and talked to, to the MD and, uh, and I said, I need to sit down. And I didn't tell them why. I just said, I need to sit down for a month. Can I tell you what happened? When I sat down for a month, the spirit of the Lord swept through that place. And that let me know, like Jermaine said, he don't need me. He gonna sweep through this place, whether it's me. Mm -hmm. and, and watch this. Can I help you? The person that, that God used couldn't sing 50% as well. Didn't have that moxie, didn't have that swag, didn't have, a, didn't have a whole thing, didn't have a whole package. But God used them in a mighty way and people got free. So that's when I realized sitting down, wow, you don't need me at all. So yeah. it's... It's, 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 it's a duty, it's, a, it's an honor, to, it's a privilege to be able to give my gift back to you. Let me, let, let me do that, I'll do that. Now that's the key right there. The duty, privilege, and honor will keep you in a place to where you can appreciate the service. Because if the service is all about what you're doing at the time you're doing it, and then when you're done doing what you do, you don't get any service. You, you could care less about what the preacher's talking about. You in the back, you outside, you're doing all this other kind of stuff. 
and the only time you're on is when you're on, you live in a dangerous life. Because as great as you can be while you're ministering to other people, that's not you. That's God speaking through you for them. When you come off of that thing, if you don't have anything pouring into you, you end up like a absolute shipwreck and not and not uh, being able to understand why am I depressed? Why am I confused? Why am I not happy? Why am I stressed out? Because there's nothing pouring into you, not because it's not around you. It's just that you're not open to receive it. And when you do exactly what the both of y'all just said you do and come to grips that God does not need me, I am available to him. That thing turns around and bookings start coming. People start calling you to do stuff. I mean, it just starts opening. People start saying to you, you have a glow about you, you know, and it ain't about you being fine or pretty or none of that kind of stuff. You start taking it in the way in which it is given so that you can give the glory back to God. And, and just talking to you, I had a whole nother situation in my head to talk about. But this thing shifted to a whole nother place and I'm glad it did because there's so many people watching that's in that space. And some of them don't even know they're in the space. You know what I'm saying? It's just that we as the, the congregation, we are only loving people from a good place. It's how they take and, and consume that love that takes that place and taints it. And I am so grateful. Popular. Serving is not popular. So that's not going to get reposted. That's not going to get pictures taken from. Like, so, you know, I, I, like, quick story. I was, I was in Vegas. I'm sorry. I was in, I, I, I talked. Like, I know my assignment. My assignment is to talk. Singing just get me places. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 I just found that out. So I'm sorry. I'm along with it. I'm so sorry, right? <laughs> so you know, we in, we in the Stella, we had the Stella Wars, right, in Vegas. And me and my fiance, we went to go look at um, the, uh, the, uh, not the Grand Canyon, the, uh, uh, what's the, uh, Hoover Dam. The Hoover mm -hmm. Dam is out there. On well, the process of going to the Hoover Dam, right? The process of going to the Hoover Dam, it gets, you, the, the, the landscape is amazing, right? So you get close, to, the closer you get to the Hoover Dam, you see traffic. Then you got rocks, right? And these rocks is random wires coming out of rock. It's random rock and there's wires coming out of, out, of, out, of, out of rocks, right? I'm thinking to myself, why, what are these wires? Keep going down, it's pipes coming out of random rock, right? We park up, we get to the um, Hoover Dam. Everybody's rushing to the Hoover Dam to take pictures with the Hoover Dam. Then it hits me. The wires and the pipes is what makes the Hoover Dam run. Nobody mm -hmm. takes the pictures of the wires and the, and the pipes. But not, not knowing that with this stuff right here, no lie, this is what happened. No lie. The pipes and the, and the random wires that's coming out of random rock is what people fascinate, is why people are fascinating over the Hoover Dam because this is what's making this Hoover Dam run, these wires and these pipes. And so right now, a lot of people don't want to serve. They, they're thinking, like, I'm, not the, I'm, I'm an usher or I keep getting to pass the water. No, you serve in territories that you soon hope to conquer. You serve in territories that you soon hope to conquer. One way to success is to serve. And in order to lead, you must follow. So it yeah, is, I, I live by that. It is immensely huge that people hear what's coming out of your mouth right now. It is big that people hear, Lexi, what's coming out of your mouth. Because while we like to clown, while we like to joke, and Lord knows we like to laugh, right. there was a shift in just this show that is far and beyond what my thought for the show was, which tells me that there's somebody watching us right now that's in the brink of shifting and needed the testimonies of the two people that they admire, that they watch, that they listen to, all of that that they see on social media. And you all have stepped to the plate and done exactly, exactly what God has called you to do. And I'm telling you right now, I couldn't have hoped for a better half hour. Lord Jesus, <laughs> I might have to play this twice. Lord Jesus, <laughs> listen, Lexi, you know, I love you for real. You are my girl and uh, will always be with your fine self. I don't know if I should say that on the, do that, do that one more time, one more time. Boom, there it is. <laughs> yeah, hey, Lex, you be killing them with a gram, dog. You be killing them. <laughs> 
we screenshot pictures of you, right? We sitting, I said, hey, you see Lexi? Lexi ain't playing. She's like, yo, Lexi ain't playing with him, dog. We screenshot hey. you all the time. Jermaine, I like myself, too. Say less, right. say less, say less, say less. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, ladies and gentlemen, Jermaine, Dolly, Lexi, it is the real deal here on the Lonnie Hunter Show. And I just want to have these conversations every week with different artists. And oh, I forgot to play Clues and Categories. We got to have them back. We got to have them back and play Clues and Categories because at the end of the season, the winner of Clues and Categories for that show, you come back and there's a tournament. So Todd Delaney won his game, Ricky Dillard won his game, uh, Tasha Page Lockhart won her game, and at the end of the season, we're bringing everybody at, back for a tournament, and we're gonna give a, a check to your favorite charity based on who comes out ahead. So y'all, will y'all come back? Yes. We got a lot to talk about, so we're gonna have them back, ladies and gentlemen. We're gonna play clues and categories, and we're gonna hopefully stick to the script. <laughs> Cause you know we go. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it is the Lonnie Hunter Variety Show right here on the Rama Television Network. Love you for real. Go. To improve, to impact, to inspire. It's not what I do, but merely who I am. Who I'm called to be. I am William A. Brownlee Sr., overseer founder of Emmanuel Christian Center of Philadelphia and Los Angeles, California. I'm also an author to the nations and one of my favorite quotes from my book, The Life Changers Quotes, for life is leadership is not about control. It's about empowering others to take control of their choices. As overseer of Emmanuel Christian Center of Philadelphia and Los Angeles, I invite you to a place of love and no judgment, for we are the church. We are here to repair the breach, for we are the community who are assigned to build communities and become an impact in individual spiritual and natural life. Visit us, www.emmanuelchristiancenterinc.com and on Instagram at Emmanuel Christ Inc. I love you all to life and I'll see you soon. Hey everybody, I'm Gabby. If you have a Roku TV, an Android TV, Amazon Fire TV, or a smart TV, it is so easy to add Rayma Television Network to your streaming device or television. Simply select your home button and scroll down to streaming channels. Select streaming channels and then scroll down to search channels. Select search channels and type in Rayma Television Network. Click add channel and enjoy. Now you only have to take these steps one time. And remember, RTN is the People's Television Network.